May I read what you wrote? The little dedication of the of book course. that you did? Okay. Leave the F words out. To Steve, uh, you lived uh, through part of this with, with right. you, yes. I lived through all of it. Don't try this at home, Pat. <laughs> you have lived a big life. I think of you as Pat the Cat because you've had nine lives. Right. It's all been public. Uh, you're a guy who covered celebrities, but you were an equal celebrity with the people you're covering. You had odd situations in your life where you would be doing stories on people who were drug addicted. Mm -hmm. And then you'd go back to your hotel room. And drink. And drink. Uh, you are how many years clean now? I'm coming up on six years sober. There's an app for that. It's about 56,000 hours. Uh -huh. uh, but I'm very proud of that. And I don't, uh, I take it seriously. I go to recovery meetings every day, twice a day. And uh, this book tour has given me the opportunity to go around and let people know, that, and I hope we'll talk about it, that if you have or think you have a problem with alcohol, you probably do, uh, but there is a solution. We can get into it, but there's probably some tabloid stuff you want to talk about. Is... Why are you assuming what I want to talk about? Because I used to sit in that chair. <laughs> yeah, but I'm better than you at that. All right, well, let's no, go No, because you did all tabloid for a while. I can, well, I, I mean, that's for the here. point of the book. Yes. I mean, I mean, I did sports, and that wasn't tabloid. Mm -hmm. And when I got to the entertainment shows, they were fine, as you know. Right. But then they turned uh, Linda Bell Blue, uh, turned them into just unwatchable tabloid shows. And by the way, and I wrote the book because there's so many misnomers about me. Voicemail, yeah, I did that. Uh, but everything else... Uh, is wrong on my Wikipedia. Mm -hmm. uh, I never got fired. I, all, through all this, I got paid an enormous amount of money. And I, I, I got out to take care of myself. You know, I learned very quickly that if you don't take care of yourself, you are effed mm -hmm. because you die alone in that coffin. And if you don't get alone with yourself, uh, you're in bad shape. So I've been running around the country, Patrick Kennedy and I. By the way, it's a drinking game. Every time I drop a name, yeah. Someone drinks, so. That's why America drinks a lot. Because of me. Yeah, because yeah. you drop a I'm lot of names. I'm enabling people. Well, I've met a lot of people. That's the other thing. I mean, I met, you meet a lot of people. Of course. You meet everybody. Of course. I, let me ask you this question. I, I think you were talking to Oprah, and, and you were talking very insightfully about your life, your parents, and all of that. And she said to you, why didn't you, you're a smart guy, why didn't you have those insights then? And your answer was one word, ego. Talk about that. Well, I mean, she's also said, I was surprised, she said, uh, why don't you just stop drinking? Alcoholism is a brain disease. You can't stop. Right. Like, if you tried to alter your brain today, mm -hmm. you couldn't. You can change your feelings, but you can't alter the, the scepters in your brain. So it's a disease. Let's get that out of the way. Uh, I had a big ego, and the problem with the ego is that, as you know, <laughs> Uh, no, the problem with the ego is that the ego lies to you and it says, sure. Pat, you can be bigger. Pat, you want more. Pat, get more. Pat, get more at any price. And I did. I've been very blessed with a tremendous, nobody's ever going to have a career like this uh, because it's just changed. It's not because I was so great. But my ego kept me going and grandiosity, which is a word I use in the book a lot, uh, kept me thinking that I was right. Alcoholics lie, lie to themselves. And the biggest lie they tell is, you need a drink to help you feel better. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, uh, I'm trying to let people know, and I've been all over, you've seen, I've been all over the country, everywhere, that um, you can't let your ego talk to you. There are no voices in your head because those voices you put in your head. You know, the Dalai Lama once said that, someone asked him, and I won't say it was me, but someone asked him, could have been me, uh, what he did with all the, all the people that killed his family and the millions of people in his, you know, around him. And he said, I put them in my head in a prison. And one day I gave them the key and I opened the door and let them go. And Have you been able to do that? Yes. And this is a different Pat O'Brien you're talking to. I, <coughs> I have freedom from that. I have no secrets because of that book. And it's very, very, uh, you know, eternal vigilance is the price of liberty, and I, I keep at it. Was there ever a moment uh, where it, it got to, all to be too much? You've been in rehab a few times, you've been publicly humiliated, all of that, where you said, maybe the public life really isn't for me. Maybe I'd be better off getting away from this stuff. I, th th there's an addiction to the camera, there's an addiction Absolutely. to being loved. I mean, we're in the business of, um, where are the girls? Uh, uh, they're here. They walk around down. the building. Yeah. We're in the business of... Uh, needing to have strangers love us. That's just the way this business is. Mm -hmm. We wake up and go to bed. Maybe you don't, but you know you do. 
wondering if it was a good show and if strangers love us. Um, I, what was the question? The question was, why didn't you at some point perhaps think this public life is wrong for Pat O'Brien? Well, I did. You know, I kept going and going and going, and, and they kept supporting me and supporting me, enabling me, really. And uh, there's, I, I don't do much else. I can tap dance, not mm -hmm. much of a call for that. Uh, the one thing I do do well is I'm a great father. I've yeah. done that well. And that's been very important to you. Also, I, by the way, let me mention in the uh, South Carolina Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, which you, you all visit. Yeah, South Dakota. Uh, South Dakota, what did I say? South Carolina? Yeah. yeah South Dakota, because you're in the band. Dale Gregory and the Shouters. I mean, yeah. twice, by the way. Twice. Um, but, you know, at some wait, point. Wait, I, who I, else I, is in the South Dakota Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? Um, who else matters? <laughs> Okay, go on. Um, my other band is in there, too. But, you know, at some point I, I took, you know, and I want everybody to be able to take a look at themselves. On my last day, Steve, uh, at my own house in Nantucket, I drank, the number gets bigger every time I say this, but it was over a case of wine in one day. And thanks to uh, people that you know and, and uh, some celebrities who are in the program, uh, they got a hold of me and talked me out of it, but I was this far from, I was pretty much dead. Mm. And they medevac me to Hazleton, and that's where I got sober. You know how I got sober is that I finally realized, and I talk about this in the book, um, that my life is very much like Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz. And that all along, I could, to your question, I could have gone home. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, Dorothy went through all the poppy fields and the trees and the scary stuff and everything. And at the very end of the day, Frank Baum, who's from South Dakota, wrote the book and, and she found out she could go home. And that's what I did. I, I found out that nothing else matters but who I think of myself. And now I don't care what other people think of me because that was a problem. And I'm not working for Linda Bell Blue anymore because that was a problem. But at the very end, they were all my problems. And I did open the door and let them out.